lots of big breaking news. They are hitting these states extremely hard and they keep getting hit over and over and over and they just got hit again. This is absolutely insane that this keeps happening in the same area and the same waterways keep getting poisoned and keep having toxic and now even radioactive material are being dumped into the waterways and infecting the Mississippi River. This is happening right now and another one just happened and this is affecting over 10 states that border the Mississippi River. We will get into all this news. There's also shelter in place orders being issued for more attacks on our food processing plant and our food supply chain. These attacks are increasing in frequency and they are not going to go away. Let's get an update really quick on what's happening in Ohio because Ohio's the model. Ohio's the model and they want to implement it nationwide. All right, They want to destroy our country's water, destroy our country's farmland, destroy all of our critical infrastructure for growing food and poison it with dioxins. All right, so you can see here, Nick Sorter is reporting on Twitter. Go follow me on Twitter, please, if you don't. By the way, I'm reporting on there all the time, and you never know. But you can see here, he's saying soil testing in East Palestine has revealed dioxin levels hundreds of times higher than the cancer risk threshold. The area is not safe. All right, so they're finally getting soil tests back because... All of these labs have been very resistant to test the soil or test the water in these areas. And there was even people theorizing that they are shutting down these tests and they are not allowing them from higher up. They're telling them no, because these all these labs are owned by bigger corporations and they all have investments in the railroads as well in this infrastructure. And they have interests in protecting themselves, not the people. So dioxin levels hundreds of times higher than the cancer risk. All right. And this isn't even the big breaking news. This is just an update on Ohio because it needs to stay in the news. And these people are suffering dioxins hundreds. And it just goes to show if there's an emergency where you live and now the entire Mississippi River has been poisoned all right with radioactive material we will get to that in just a second but if you are being poisoned where you live they're not going to respond they're not going to do anything and there's going to be no protection and you need to have water filters and honestly the best scenario is this is a time to activate your bug out plan this is a time to bug out Go so go to another location. Go to a more secure location. This is a disaster. This is hitting the fan in Ohio. And it's time to bug out. It's time to get out of there. It's been time to bug out. But you need to get out of there ASAP. And dioxin levels are... Dioxins are directly related to Agent Orange, which causes massive deformities and things like microcephaly, macrocephaly, people being born without organs and limbs this is a very devastating chemical and there's hundreds of times higher than the cancer risk threshold so we're probably reaching levels that could mimic agent orange symptoms so shout out to nick he's risking his life to give us this information he's in east palestine right now and he is not evacuated just to give us updates on what's going on boots on the ground and this is the model for the rest of the country. They want to implement the Ohio model for the rest of us. And they already are. They're already starting. They keep hitting the Mississippi River. And the Mississippi River just got hit again. So you can see here Excel Energy in the Monticello area right outside of Minneapolis, Minnesota. And it's, look at that river. What's that river right there? The Mississippi River. And it had a massive radioactive water leak that spilled 400,000 gallons of radioactive water with tritium isotopes in it, which can cause cancer, a whole host of things. They dumped it into the river. At least 400,000. That's what they're saying. And this went on actually for a 
quite a long time. For over a month, this week went on, and it actually happened in November, and they didn't even report on it until just now. They just disclosed, disclosed it, and this week went on for over a month because they had multiple breaks, and they couldn't find out where this radioactive water was leaking. So that's just the great number they're giving us, 400,000. I bet it was a lot more than that and just dumped into the Mississippi River in November. And there was no disclosure. Nobody told you that the Mississippi River was filled with radioactive uh, isotopes. All right, And look at this. This is what it was filled with. So we have normal H2O and then we have HTO, which is a radioactive isotope of hydrogen and tritium can cause cancer genetic defects reproductive defects developmental abnormalities and decreased brain weight this is insane that this was dumped into the mississippi river months ago in november and they're just now telling us and they said they didn't tell everybody to keep you safe all right, to keep you safe. So let's dive into what they're saying here. It says Minnesota regulators said Thursday they're monitoring the cleanup of a leak of 400,000 gallons of radioactive water from XL Energy Monticello Nuclear Power Plant. And the company said there's no danger to the public. XL Energy took swift action to contain the leak to the plant site, which poses no health and safety risk to the local community or the environment. So don't worry, swift action but they didn't tell you that it happened in November and they said they hit it because uh, they wanted to figure out if it was actually a danger. So they had to figure out if it was a danger before they told you it was a danger and they figured out it wasn't a danger so they just didn't tell you, right? So this is absolutely insane. And when they were asked why they didn't notify people, this is what they said, quote, we understand the importance of quickly informing the communities we serve if a situation poses an immediate threat to health and safety. In this case, there was no such threat. The company said it focused on investigating the situation containing the affected water and figuring out the next steps. So don't worry. Don't worry about it. All right, this happened in November. You've just been getting radiated with uh, tratiated water, and it's fine. It's no big deal. And they just dumped it into the Mississippi River at least 400,000 gallons. And tritium has a half-life of 12 years. So that means it takes at least 12 years for half of it to degrade away. So that's actually a pretty long time. And it stays in the environment, in the soil, in the water for a very long time as well. And people could be drinking this water. We could be watering our crops with it. All the winter crops that got watered with water from the Mississippi River could have been exposed to this tratiated water. This is absolutely insane that they didn't tell anyone. And they're saying they didn't tell anyone because it was no big deal and there was no reason to tell you. They are just, they are doing things left and right. Remember that massive fire, that uranium fire at that top nuclear facility in Tennessee right outside Knoxville? Remember that last month? Never happens. Never heard of a story like this. And there was a uranium fire in Tennessee. How do these things keep happening? And now we see radioactive wastewater dumped into the Mississippi River. And look at that. The Mississippi River, this XL Energy Monticello plant is miles away from the beginning of the Mississippi River. The origin of the Mississippi River is directly north of this plant. It essentially starts like right around this area. And just a major coincidence that this plant has a massive leak and dumps tons of radioactive water so it can travel all the way down the Mississippi. And this tritiated water, this tritium, has a half-life of at least 12 years. So what's going to be in the soil and, it, and that's, it only degrades half every 12 years. So it takes another 12 years to degrade half. And it's, it takes a long time to get out of the environment. Could be in the soil, in the water. 
for decades because people are taking water out of the Mississippi and watering their crops with it. Then it gets into the wells. Then it gets into the aquifer. This radioactive water has been spreading all over this region, the Midwest region. Once again, Ohio, Indiana, Illinois, Kentucky, Tennessee, Missouri, all these states are getting hit. That new that uranium fire was in Tennessee. All right. We've seen plant after plant explode in Ohio. If you've been following my channel, it's been insane how many factories have exploded outside of Cincinnati, Ohio. What's going on? And that's only a couple hours away from East Palestine as well. We are getting hit left and right. And now radioactive water was dumped in. And they have the gall to say, we don't even, we don't need to tell you it's not, it's fine. Do, do you see how close it is to the Mississippi River? There's no way they were able to contain 400,000 gallons. That's just what they say. I bet it was way higher because why else, why would they wait so long? If it was not a big deal, they would have told us, all right? They would have been bragging about it. And things like this happened in Fukushima. This was exactly the problem when there was a nuclear power plant meltdown from the earthquake in Japan at Fukushima. And it was right on the ocean. And their main issue was this tritiated water, this tritium water. And they couldn't get rid of it. And the only thing they had to do, their only solution was to dump it into the ocean. So they dumped millions of gallons of radioactive water into the ocean. And it, it just floated right over to California. The, the, the water pass just came to California. And I remember people had Geiger counters out there on the beaches on the West Coast. And they were measuring radiation levels from this radioactive water from Fukushima all the way in Japan. So don't tell me that this isn't a big deal having hundreds of thousands of gallons dumped right next to the Mississippi River. And once it's in the river, it's gone. It's going to hit all these states, and all these states depend on the river for fresh water sources, farming sources, moving goods, uh, barges, ships, all travel on the river. And the Ohio River flows into the Mississippi as well. So it's getting contaminated with all these dioxins from East Palestine. And then it's also getting contaminated with radioactive water. And I reported on in northern Mississippi last month too, there was a massive toxic chemical spill right on, right along the Mississippi River and just dumped into the river there too. And it was barely reported. These attacks keep increasing in frequency and we're going to see a lot more. And this could be, this could be warfare. All right. This is part of warfare is taking out a country's resources, their critical infrastructure, their water, their food supply. These are the main things that keeps America going is our massive farming industry. We are able to produce massive amounts of food. But if all of our food is tainted with all of these chemicals, nobody's going to want to buy it. All right, there's already countries rejecting our food, like Mexico rejecting our GMO corn. They are refusing to buy it now. If you poison a country's food and water supply, they are completely vulnerable in a time of conflict because imports and exports could be disrupted in a conflict situation, right? And a country might need to produce all of their own food to survive. And there have been even more attacks on our food supply as well we will get to that in just a second but there was another attack on our wastewater supplies so this was in maryland and there was a massive explosion at a wastewater treatment plant just yesterday how many more of these systems need to go offline before we wake up we even had a top cybersecurity official come out last week i made a whole video on it and she was warning that these types of facilities are going to be targeted directly. She was even warning of water treatment facilities. They could be targeted with cyber attacks and they could be manipulated to increase the chemical levels, right? This happened 
in Oldsmar, Florida, right, a couple years ago, and they manipulated the sodium hydroxide levels in the water, and this could have killed people. This could have blinded people. This could have burned people, and they never even found out who did it, okay? It's one of these things where these systems could be accessed from the outside, and this could have been another cyber attack to cause this explosion at this water treatment plant. Government officials were warning of this exact thing just last week. I made a whole video on it, right? And now, oh, radioactive water in the Mississippi too. And they just have the gall to say that. We, we understand the importance of informing you, but there was no reason to inform you. In this case, there was no such threat. There's no threat to have radioactive tracheated water dumping into the Mississippi River at the top of the water system too. This isn't even down south. It's going to go into the ocean and filter out hopefully. This is at the top of the system and it has to travel all the way down through these states. I mean, how do they even have the authority to not tell these other states that this radioactive water is traveling through? It's absolutely insane that these other nine states know about it. I doubt it. I bet this was kept a secret until now and they're only disclosing it because they have to. It's one of those things they always they always tell us what they're doing. It's like, yeah, there's radioactive water, but it's fine. It's safe and effective and it's good. All right, just like everything else we always hear. And we are getting attack after attack. There was a shelter in place order issued for the second time. This was in Pennsylvania, Lancaster, Pennsylvania, and a hazmat situation because of a ammonia leak at a meat processing facility. And this is the second time this has happened in the past week at the same facility. Why do these attacks keep happening and who benefits from it? It's one of these things we always have to ask. Who would be doing these attacks and who would benefit from it? And there are groups that want to take out America's food supply. It's more than just the meme of, oh, eat, eat the bugs. Eat the bugs or whatever. I can't. I, I cannot do this guy's accent. All right. Gosh, mom, I cannot do the accent. All right. But it's more It's more than just that. You will eat the bugs. All right. It's more than just a meme of eating the bugs. It is control. It is so basic it is so human basic level what you eat all right it is something that is very personal it's everyone eats different things even if you live in the same exact household as people you eat different things as them all right it's a very personal thing and it's about control at the end of the day they want to control our food supply and they want to bring it down all right the way you control things is to break it down and build something new on top of it they always give us the problem all right we keep having these situations at our food processing facilities i made a video a couple days ago how hundreds of farms or hundreds of farmers have been locked out of their farms essentially from cyber attacks and this is happening more and more frequently and top experts are even warning that this is going to get a lot worse and this is just the beginning and he has farmers calling him in the middle of the night begging him for help because he has people threatening to harm his animals too all right to cut his animals off from certain resources to block him out of certain systems so he can't operate his farm all right there is attack after attack on our food supply and it's more than just, yeah, they want us to eat bugs just because they have this agenda. They want to completely obliterate our food supply and make it completely dystopian, completely unhealthy. They've already done that. Most of the food we eat is fake food. Most of the crap we eat is completely fake. It has 5,000 ingredients in it. And most of these ingredients are unnecessary and a lot of them are addictive additive chemicals to literally get you addicted to these certain foods and i'm guilty of this too all right i eat junk food sometimes i i'm not the healthiest eater all the time i try to be 
but I'm guilty of this too. These foods are filled with addictive chemicals already. They've already captured our food supply and now they want to tear down the rest of it and completely rebuild it with fake food. They are able to grow food in a lab now and one of the ways that they do it is by using this immortal genetic cancer cell line to grow the food, okay? It is from this lady named Henrietta Lacks. She was a farmer and she had this very rare cancer that no one's ever seen before and it mutates and spreads so fast that they call it an immortal cell line and they still have Henrietta Lacks cancer cells and they use it for research and testing and everything. It it revolutionized genetic testing and all these other lab tests, these cancer cells from Henrietta Lacks, and they are called an immortal cell line and they're still alive today. These cells from her, they never die and they constantly reproduce at rapid rates and they use the base of these cells from Henrietta Lacks and this is all true. You can go look this up. This is a real person. All this is real, 100%. And they use her cells as the base to grow some of this food because it has such a rapid replication rate. And they use it to grow this synthetic food in the labs. And they use it for a lot of the base for a lot of these sick, twisted things in lab experiments. But this is what they want to feed us. They want to feed us lab-grown food that is grown from a woman that passed away decades and decades ago. This was a long time ago, like going on 100 years ago now. They've had this lady's, this was like 75 years ago. They've had her cell line and they've been using it for experiments. And now we've gotten to the point where they want to use her cell line to grow food right and this is part of the reason why people aren't going to just line up for this some people will all right because they are they're not thinking clearly about what this really is about what they're really eating because all of these alternatives are not even healthy for you all right they are all GMOs filled with pesticides, filled with chemicals, lab-grown BS. A lot of these alternatives are not even healthy for you at all. And there will be people to line up for this lab-grown meat. But once people find out, hey, this is grown from Henrietta Lacks immortal line cancer cells, people are going to be freaked out. So they have to kind of force it. They have to make it a necessity where the food supply is so ruined, it's so destroyed, it's in such chaos, the global supply chains, the banking system, all right? I'll talk a little bit more about that in just a second. But they want to make it so all of these systems are in such chaos that the only solution is to, yeah, we can't grow food. The, the environment's been poisoned with radioactive wastewater. It's been poisoned with dioxins hundreds of levels of times higher yeah we can't grow food we can't grow food anymore because the land is completely contaminated and has been destroyed with these forever chemicals that never leave dioxins never leave they stay in the soil essentially forever just like this tritium has extremely long half-life and they're like it's no big deal we told we we decided not to tell you you didn't need to know all right, look at this. There's a park right there. There's a field. That's probably a, a kid's soccer field. Monticello City Fields. That's probably a soccer field right there. Uh, uh, Monticello Regional Park. Monticello Country Club. Uh, like, look at all these parks and stuff right here. All right, Monticello City Fields. That's probably a soccer field that kids play at. And they're like, you didn't, you didn't need to know that. You, you didn't need to know. It's safe, buddy. We told you it's safe. We tested it later because they don't want any testing. They wish this Ohio thing got no attention because, yeah, they could have came out months later and been like, 
we tested it. It's safe. Like, it's good to go. We tested this one little thing right here where we scrubbed it like crazy, took the scrub daddy to it like a madman. All right, I'm joking, obviously. But, and test this little uh, area that they choose, that they cleaned excessively and say, look, there's nothing here. It's good to go. That's what they did here, essentially. They had a massive radioactive waste disaster and they waited months to tell anyone and then they can come back and be like hey it's everything's good now don't worry guys we're good see it's safe see you didn't uh grow a grow a third arm did you from radioactive waste no there there's a a soccer field right there and a park right there come on come on man come on man this is absolutely insane that they did not inform the public and then the Mississippi Ripper goes all the way down, goes down into Minneapolis and just floods the country with this radioactive tritiated water. And you didn't even deserve to know about it. You didn't even deserve to know about it. And this is what they want to do. They want to destroy our food supply, destroy our waterways. So they have complete control. There's always been this saying that all they have to do is turn the water off. All they have to do is turn the water off. And it's true. All, right? All these other things are very important. They're critical to the banking, uh, telecommunications, all these other things. But if the water supply is off or if it's poisoned, it's unusable, everything else stops. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter what else is going on. Everything else stops. You can't farm. You can't drink. And there will be chaos, right? And these attacks keep increasing in frequency. And it could be a power grab too. They could be just polluting our environment, destroying the waterways, destroying the farmland. So they can come in and claim all the farmland too. So they can make it impossible to farm by polluting all the water, make our food polluted. And then they can say, hey, it's so polluted over here that... We need to take this land. We need to shut down these farms over here. You're not allowed to grow food here. This is too polluted. That also could be the solution as well. I made the point how in Ohio, these people's yards are in toxic waste dumps. I made a whole video on it showing a bunch of pictures and everything. But some, some of these people's yards, their backyard is where the train derailment happened. It's directly in their backyard. It's a toxic waste, waste filth dump right and i'm not it's not the people's fault it's norfolk southern's fault it's not their fault but this is what they've turned their yards into and they're still living there and the government would condemn any other person living there they would condemn you they they wouldn't even allow you to live there if you made the yard like that yourself if you dumped a bunch of toxic crap in the yard they wouldn't even allow you to live there but if some company does it that lobbies and gives money to these politicians then they're allowed to make your yard a toxic waste dump and you don't even get any restitution or anything for it this is absolutely just clown world that we are living in and it's on purpose the reason why it's so clownish is because it's on purpose there is absolutely no way that this much incompetence exists it's impossible it has to be on purpose at this point. There's just too many coincidences. How does this nuclear power plant get away with not telling people for months and months that the, Miss the entire Mississippi River has been poisoned with radioactive water? And they just, they just, it's, it's March 17th. They just told people yesterday at a press conference. <laughs> are you, are you kidding? This happened in November. All right, we already we had Thanksgiving, we had Christmas, we had birthdays, we had New Year's. I'm like, we had all this stuff in my family. Valentine's Day, it's St. Patrick's Day, Happy St. Patrick's Day, by the way. All right, we've we've had all this stuff. We've had ten ten different holidays since this happened, and they just refuse to tell people that the Mississippi River is poison. All right, it's absolutely insane living in clown world. And here's here's another coincidence for you. Let's hit on this too. Truck carrying live chickens catches fire on the Staten Island Expressway. All right. Potentially thousands of chickens were killed from this. And it's just another complete coincidence. 
and not another attack on our food supply. What was I just saying before? They need to break down our food supply so they can give us these alternatives, all right? And they're going to give us very dystopian alternatives, and that's all there is going to be left. And <clears throat> I don't know if you've seen that movie Soil and Green before where they end up eating humans. The humans are the food that you eat and you are so desperate for your ration. You're begging for these soylent rations. And then people find out that it's made of humans. This is, this is a very similar idea if you incorporate what I was talking about, this lady Henrietta Lacks. Her immortal cell line is being used to grow some of this food, right? So is is this food technically food? Is this like have human DNA in it? Think about it. This is really getting sick and dystopian and honestly satanic. It's getting satanic. It always has been. There's always been an element, but it's becoming very open and very sick and twisted very quickly. All right. Even states like California approved uh, last year, I made a whole video on this. They approved putting human compost remains on farm fields. Okay. So, and California is one of the biggest food producers in the country. So the food they're sending to other states could have been grown with literal human remains that have been composted. It's safe. Don't worry. But I do not trust it for a second. This is opening up vectors for diseases and it's borderline satanic, and they want to infect our human DNA. They want to pervert our human DNA and manipulate it, and this is just one of the many ways, and just like this lab-grown food, okay? If it's being grown with human cancer cells from 75 years ago that are still alive, just so, so weird and dystopian. How much of that meat being grown is actually a steak, is actually from a cow, is cow genetics? If you tested it genetically, how much is, is it is actually from a cow, All right? How much is it is human DNA from these cancer cells? I should have gotten more articles and stuff on this, but I just thought about this because it's true. Our food supply is under attack and they want to pervert it and manipulate it and have ultimate control over it and even have nanoparticles inside of the food. This has already been approved as well that microscopic nanoparticles of all types of different synthetic materials have been approved just recently before or just recently by the FDA, all right? And these nanoparticles are so dangerous because they can permeate membranes very easily, right? A lot of these chemicals and these substances, your body can't just directly absorb them, but these nanoparticles are so small that they can directly permeate cells, some of them, and get deep into your body tissue, all right? And they are just releasing these into the food supply as well. We are entering the 21st age where they want to just feed us this Franken food, this Soylent Green Franken food. And we're already living in the future, all right? We're already living in it. The skies are being sprayed and poisoned every single day. The water is being poisoned with these toxic chemicals every single day. Our direct food that we consume and buy from the store is being poisoned, has all these additives and junk in them every single day. It's already here. We are already in the dystopia. We're living in the future. We just don't get all the cool stuff. We don't get the flying cars. We don't get the space travel. We don't get the life extension technology. We don't get the health healing technology. We're not going to get any of that. We're just going to get the dystopian side, the control side, because we are only given certain aspects. That's why I keep saying this AI being released onto the public 
is extremely dangerous. They only release certain things. They've had the AI that's being released is so low level and so basic. It's almost like a joke, but it's also very dangerous because it shows what they have in store. The military, the government, their AI is 10 years advanced on top of this. Everything they release is always 10 years behind. Anything they tell us what's actually going on, they disclose. That's They had that 10 years ago, at least the Pentagon did, the military did, the government did. They had this technology at least 10 years ago, and now it has just become privatized and released. And only certain technologies are because they want to release it for a reason on the public. They want to use it and see how the public reacts to it some way and try to manipulate the public with it as well. So these tools are only released at certain times for a reason, but everything we're seeing is at least 10 years behind and they're going to start releasing even more dangerous technology and it's going to be stealth. Just like I said, these nanoparticles, 5G being implemented, geoengineering, the skies being sprayed, all these things are going to be implemented in stealth around us. So when the time comes, when the big collapse comes, they already have their critical infrastructure in place to control us, all right? Because they can't just have a collapse and have nothing left and then it's just chaos and lose the potential control that they had. They have to have a controlled demolition like a building, all right? Sounds familiar. They have to have a building. It has to be controlled like a building collapse, okay? It can't just be chaotic and they have to have all their people in place. They have all, all the crews in place, everything set up, everything, and then they push the button, okay? They're not just going to run into a building with a bulldozer and make it fall. It's a controlled demolition, and that's what we're seeing right now, too, of our society. They're hitting all of these critical points time after time again. They keep getting hit over and over until something's going to break, just like this banking collapse system. The Fed is saying they are going to raise interest rates again next week. So I don't understand what's happening. They, they are just going to make it even worse, most likely. They're going to make a liquidity crisis, a reserve crisis, even worse. And it's because they knew what they were doing. They knew what they were doing in the past three years. They set it up. And now we are paying the consequences for it. And just like this, just like all of these explosions, just like all of these radioactive events, these contamination events, it's a controlled collapse. Little by little, contaminate our water, contaminate the food supply, contaminate the skies, contaminate everything until it's unusable. So let me know what you guys think. Make sure you're getting prepared. Make sure you are stocked up all right these bank runs are absolutely insane we could see a, another big one very soon hopefully not but be prepared be preemptive don't be a part of the problem be preemptive and be prepared all right the point is to just point out these things before they happen so you can get prepared now and then when they happen in a few months you're like oh yeah i already knew about that i'm already prepared for that and you're not reacting like everyone like ah gotta get my money out pulling your hair out or gotta whatever you know what i mean gotta have food there's no food in the pantry like you don't want to be that person that you're not going to survive you want to thrive in these situations so get prepared now guys Thank you so much for watching me. If you're still watching this video all the way at the end here, thank you so much. You freaking rock just watching me, listen to me talk here. Thank you so much. I am super blessed to have you as a listener. I am honored. Thank you. I hope you have big blessings in your life for your family. You have truly blessed me and my family. You guys watching me every single day. It it literally gives me and my family blessings. It helps me put food on the table for my family and I'm honored just you watching my videos okay it's it's literally changed my life so thank you guys so much I'm super blessed and I hope you have a big old 
blessed day.